Good morning class, I'm Sergeant Jones. I'll be your instructor today. Today's briefing is unclassified. The risk assessment for today, it's currently sunny, but we live in Florida, so you never know when it's gonna rain. It's gonna rain tomorrow, so you don't know if those clouds will come early today. If it rains, we'll go ahead and wrap up training for the day, and we'll depart in our POVs, cleaning up your mess. And to my right, your left, there's water. It's non-potable, so don't drink it. There's a lane full landfill right next to it so it's probably poisonous to you don't get in the water none of our training is going to involve this water so don't get in it you might drown and wildlife you see that we're in a wooded area if wildlife comes up to you don't engage with the wildlife just let the rest of the team know about it so that we can relocate ourselves all right today's task we will be going over how to determine a magnetic azimuth using a lensatic compass. And today's conditions, you are a member of a squad or a team in a field environment. You have been directed to determine a magnetic azimuth. You have a compass and a designated point on the ground. Some iterations of this task should be performed in MOP4. Team, we will not be in MOP4 today. You see the temperature, we're sweating in just our kits alone. So MOP4 is not happening. Sorry. Standard. You will inspect the compass, making sure it's you know A-OK, -okay, no faults. You will determine a magnetic azimuth to a designated point within a three degree margin. So that's to the left and right. So say you have a magnetic azimuth of 20 degrees. The margin of error to get it go would be to 23 degrees or the 17 degrees, you know, left or right, three degrees. And for the center hold method, you have a, a gray area of 10 degrees. So when you're looking at, say, something that's the 60 degree mark, you have that little leeway. So even though the item's at 60 degrees, if you give me 70 degrees or 50 degrees, you're still gonna get a go at my station. You know, there's that, there's that margin of error right there that I thought I would allow you. So that was covering number two. Three, the compass the chick method you'll be going over last all right yep no mop here so let's go over the performance steps step number one you're going to inspect your compass I'm gonna walk you through how to do this step by step pull out your compass you know it's in this little sheath remove the compass from the sheath Set the sheath to the side, remembering where you placed it. Unravel the cord. You'll be un you'll unfold the sheath, taking taking off the thumb hole or lowering it, opening the compass. See, if, make sure it opens to 100, 180 degrees. Make sure nothing's falling apart. Open up the sight post. Make sure it goes up and down freely, it doesn't get stuck. The turn dial, make sure you can rotate it without it getting stuck. Inspect your compass. Look at the degrees in red. Make sure that they're all legible. Then check the black numbers, those are your mills. Make sure that those are all legible. Make sure that your your sighting wire. Make sure that that is connected and not torn or ripped or bent. It should be a straight line. That's good. And make sure your compass, make sure it's free floating. It doesn't get stuck in any position. All right, so we inspected the compass. All right, now we'll go into step two. Ensure there are no electrical objects in our immediate area. So, that being said, I have some additional information for you guys just for, for your note-taking purposes. So, for, so, you know, this goes off of magnetic, right? Metal, electricity and stuff, well, not necessarily electricity, but it could throw it off. But, you know, this goes off of, you know, metal objects or magnetation of the earth. So, high-tension power lines, those can cause a huge disturbance in your in your lensatic compass so to my left 
your right, there's high tension power lines, but they're about 150 meters out. So we don't have to worry about that. So you wanna identify power lines or telephone wires or stuff like that when you're gonna use your compass because it could throw off your reading and you won't be accurate. And then, so yeah, 55 meters away from high power lines. Field guns such as artillery, Humvees, LMTVs, or tanks. Make sure you're 18 meters away from those. Those will throw off your reading. Your compass will go off a little bit in degrees. Telegraph or telephone wires and sea wire. Make sure you're 10 meters away from that. That'll also throw off your reading. Machine guns, two meters away from those. And steel helmets, you know, if we're working with other nations, whatever you know, gear they got, and your, your weapon system. Uh, make sure that's half a meter away from you when you're using the compass. So, number three of the performance steps. Determine an azimuth with a compass to cheek method. All right, I'm gonna demonstrate that for you. So, you'll open your compass, you know, take the loop hole down, the thumb hole down. Let me get this cord out of the way. You bring it down, open the compass to a 90 degree angle. Open this, the sighting wire hatch to the 90 degree. Open your sight post to a 45 degree angle. You'll adjust it later if you need to. Now for this method, I find it easier to remove your whatever eye pro, or if you are someone who wears glasses, to remove your eyewear to, to, for it to be you know more comfortable. So for this method, you'll take your thumb run it through the thumb hole, putting your pointer finger parallel with the compass slash marching surface. The other three fingers will go underneath to support the compass with your hand coming up, your thumb going parallel, and your other hand supporting. You're going to take the, the base of your thumb and it's going to go to your cheek. You're going to bring the compass in. Say we're looking out at this landfill right here. You're going to bring the base of your thumb to your cheek, positioning your sighting wire to the object you want to look at, and this is where you adjust your sighting post or your, you know, your rear sight until you can read the degrees or mill you're trying to achieve. So this, the landfill, is 80 degrees. No, as you were, six degrees northeast, and that's how you get the that's how you determine the magnetic azimuth using the cheek, the compass to cheek method. So put your eye pro back on because it's not going to hinder you from doing step four. So step four is going to determine a magnetic azimuth using the center hold method. So you take it, bring the thumb hole down, open it up to completely to 100 till it's 180 degrees parallel to the marching surface. Open up that rear sight post all the way till it's 90 degrees. Same thing, take your hand, put your thumb through the hole, point your finger out, you know, aligning itself with the compass, other three fingers supporting, then you'll take your, your other thumb, this thumb, is going to go in a different spot. It's going to go between the dial and the rear sight post. It's going to go between. And then your pointer finger is going to go parallel with the other three fingers supporting. You're going to bring it in to the middle of your chest, roughly, you know, halfway between your belt buckle and your chin. Hold it right there. And... You're gonna bring it in, tuck your elbows in so that way it's stir sturdy. So the benefit to this method, you know, it's fast, easy to use. You can use it while traversing terrain. You see all these rocks, you know. It's easier for me to walk around and use this method without tripping and falling on my face. It's less accurate, but you know, it's good for on the go and you're just trying to, you know, keep the general direction you're going. So we're gonna grab 
the magnetic azimuth of this warehouse over there. That's at 310 degrees northwest. Yep. And that's how you do that. So at this time, go ahead and run through performance measures one through four on your own and take about six minutes to run through all of it. All right, six minutes has passed. All right, now we're gonna be going to the evaluation. I'm gonna grab my evaluation sheet. Specialist Jimbo, you're up. Starting with performance step one. Go. Alright, you're going there. Step two. As you were for step three, get the magnetic azimuth of that concrete silo to our left. Roger, northwest 345 degrees. That's within the three degree margin. Good job. All right, now for step four, using the center hold method, get me the degrees of that radio tower out there to our right. Correct, 40 degrees. That's with the 10 degree marginal of error. Here we go. All right, everyone has been evaluated. All right, so that'll conclude today's assessment. Now let's go into the, let's go into the AR. What was supposed to happen today? Correct. I was supposed to train everybody and evaluate them how to determine a magnetic azimuth using a lensatic compass. What did happen today? Exactly that. All right. Well, what went well? All right. Everybody passed. Well, 90% pass rate. All right, what went wrong today? All right, one failure, okay. So for any failures in this class, meet me here next week, Monday, same uniform at 10 hundred hours, and we're gonna do this training again and with another evaluation. All right, what would you like to see for next time's training? Mop four, Roger. Okay, see me after the, the water starts. Okay. All right. So let's go. Okay, that that's wrapped it up for the AR. Let's go over the risk assessment review for today. The weather. The weather stayed good while we were training today. That's always a good thing. But you know, if it's not raining, you're not training. So that's a bummer. But you know, weather stayed good. Two. No wildlife bothered us today. That was fairly well. We didn't have to relocate our training site. Three. Correct. Nobody went into water. Nobody drank out of the water. So that's good. No malaria pill, pills needed. All right. Before we end today's training, I'm going to ask everybody or tell everybody, everyone in the Army and DOD, and as you were, all Army personnel and DOD civilians are required to maintain their training area. So that being said, 
clean up, police up your mess. We're gonna leave this place better than we found it. So if you see any trash that you left, your battle buddy left, or just trash that looks like it's been sitting there for a while, go ahead and pick that up as well. After the police call has been completed, I'm, I don't need anything from you guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget to sign the sign-in roster. That way I can make a count of who's been here, who's been trained today. And that, con that concludes my class. Dismissed.